Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use the Intermediate Value Theorem to prove that the function has at least one real root. To complete this problem, we'll look at the range of each term in our function and then try to draw conclusions about where the function is positive and negative. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to show that cosine of x equals x cubed has at least one real root. So essentially what we're being asked to show is that this equation we've been given has at least one point on the graph of this equation that crosses the graph of the x-axis, or put another way, where the value of this function is equal to zero. Now normally where we have to prove that there's a real root, we're given an interval. So we're said we're asked to show that there's a real root on the range 0 to 10 or 1 to 2 or whatever. And in that case, we plug in the endpoints and we show that the left endpoint is negative and the right endpoint is positive. And so we can prove using the intermediate value theorem that the graph has to cross the x-axis on that interval. In this case, we don't have an interval. We're just given an open interval and we're asked to prove that this equation has one real root anywhere. So how are we going to do that? Well, our first step will be to collect all of the terms onto one side. So let's go ahead and just call this f of x is equal to, we'll subtract cosine of x from both sides and we'll get x cubed minus cosine of x. So now we're looking at the equation here. The first thing we want to do with a problem like this is think about the domain of each term in our equation. So we have x cubed. We know that the domain of this term here is all real numbers, right? Uh, it, can, it can have any value on the x-axis and the range would be any value as well. It can be a value of negative infinity all the way to a value of positive infinity. So there's no restrictions on the domain or range of this function. Cosine of x, on the other hand, can't go outside the values y equals negative one and positive one, right? Cosine fluctuates on a curve like this between negative one and positive one. So that gives us a clue as to what we need to do here. Let's investigate this function around those values. So let's, for example, pick a value that we can plug in that's outside of that range, negative one to positive one. So if we do that, let's go ahead and, and say that we pick two, a value that's above the maximum value of the cosine function. The maximum value of the cosine function is one. If we pick two, that's above the range of the cosine function. So what we would get is two, cu two cubed here, which would give us eight. We may not know off the top of our heads the value of cosine of two, and we really don't need to because what we can show is that the maximum possible value for cosine of x is positive one. So even if this is positive one here, we'd get uh, minus one, and that would give us a value of seven. Even if the value there is the most extreme value uh, in the other direction, negative one, we'd get eight minus negative one, which would give us nine. Either way, we're gonna get an answer greater than zero. Both seven and nine here are positive numbers that are greater than zero. So what we can say is that at two, where x is equal to two, the value of this function is going to be positive. And that's gonna hold true for any value that's greater than one. Even if we picked f of 1.1, right? Just outside of the range of the cosine function, we'd get 1.1 cubed, right? Which will be some number larger than one. And even if we said 1.1 minus one, we would still get positive 0.1. And even if we said 1.1 minus a negative one, we would still get positive 2.1, both of which are going to be greater than zero. So no matter what value we pick, as long as it's greater than one, the value that our function returns here will be greater than zero or positive. So now let's look at the other end of the range of the cosine function. Remember that the lowest value the cosine function can attain is negative one. So if we look at negative two, for example, if we take f of negative two, we'll get negative eight. And again, here for cosine, we don't know the value of cosine of negative two, but we know that at best it can be positive one. And here we end up with negative nine, or we'll have negative eight 
on the other end minus a negative one, which at best will be negative seven, both of which are less than zero and negative. And we could do the same thing if if we plugged in negative 1.1, we would see that both answers were less than zero and negative. So what this shows us is that f of negative one will always be less than zero, and f of positive one will always be greater than zero. So this inequality holds true. And if we look at the intermediate value theorem, we can prove that the graph crosses the x-axis somewhere between negative one and positive one. Remember that the intermediate value theorem basically tells us that if our left endpoint here is negative and our right endpoint here is positive, the intermediate value theorem proves that the graph must attain the value of zero somewhere between these two points, which means it crosses the x-axis, which means it has a real root at that point there. The only caveat to that conclusion is we would need to make sure that the graph is continuous on that range, that the function is continuous on that range. And we can prove that because if every term in our function is continuous, Every, if every part of our function is continuous, then the function as a whole is continuous. We know that x cubed is a continuous function, and we know that cosine of x is a continuous function, which means that cosine of x equals x cubed is also a continuous function, so we don't have to worry about any continuity issues either. And that's how we prove that this equation has at least one real root in its domain. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.